Now let's take a look at some conditional probabilities, and this should look familiar to you because we did talk about it when we talked about contingency tables with two categorical variables. So we're just going to talk about it now in a little more depth and detail. So again, we have a contingency table, we have two categorical variables, and let's say I want to find these probabilities, and it says to the nearest 10,000th. So let's just take a moment to look at place values real quick. Remember that after the decimal place, this is the tenths place, so there's no once place. This is the hundredths place. This is the thousandths place. And this is the ten thousandths place. So we're looking for four places. So make sure you know what your place values are. Um, so here, the probability of a girl means out of the total of 357, the probability that it's a girl is, well, here I'm going to be looking at this total column and say there's 175 out of 357. So 175 out of 357, get your calculator out to divide, I get 0 0.4902, make sure you know how to round. Second one, probability of a freshman girl. Again, out of my 357 total people, how many are freshmen? Uh, and in fact, I'm going to change my color just so I can try to keep these a little bit straight. So again, out of 357, how many are freshman girls? And this would be the freshman girls. So 38 freshman girls. And again, get your calculator out to divide. I get 1064. So the next one is probability of freshman given it's a girl. So I know we did these before when we talked about given, but the given means that my denominator is girls. So my numerator is going to be the probability that it's a freshman girl. Ooh, let me try to not write so sloppy. Freshman girl. And the denominator is the probability that it's a girl. So here I'm going to look at girls as my denominator and freshman girls as my numerator. So again, top as it's in both, bottom is it's whatever the given condition is. And again, using my calculator to divide, 0.2171. Last one, girl, given it's a freshman. So again, same idea, I still have freshman girl on top. And on bottom is, because it says given it's a freshman, it's the probability that it's a freshman. And sorry, I shouldn't be using P's yet. That's to come. So we're just saying freshman girl on top, number of freshman girls on top, number of freshmen on the bottom. And so number of freshman girls is 38. And on the bottom, we're looking at uh, total freshmen, which is 82. And again, when I divide, 0.4634. So this works great because we're given the raw values, the numbers. Uh, I used to have P's here. You probably don't see that because when I erase it, it just goes away. But I got rid of them because we're going to talk about probabilities now in just a moment. For now, we just looked at the number of girls or freshman girls, etc. So what happens then if we have probabilities instead of raw values? That makes it a little bit harder to deal with. So now we're going to look at Key, a conditional probability formula. So conditional probability means that there is some condition that is true or some other event that already occurred. So here if we were talking about probability freshman given it's a girl tells me I know in fact that it is a girl and I now need to know what's the probability that it's a freshman girl. 
So notice my formula and don't get bogged down with all of the symbols because we've already been through these symbols so we sort of know what they mean. This means P given A, so the probability that B happened given that A happened, so probability B given A, means on the top I'm putting the intersection, which means essentially that the person or element falls into both categories. On the bottom, for my denominator, this is whatever the condition was, the probability of the condition. So if you'll notice, I have the exact same table I had before, but now I have probabilities instead of raw values. So now let's take a look at how I would do it. If I want to know the probability of a freshman girl, uh, sorry, freshman given it's a girl, notice I'm going to take on the bottom the probability that it was a girl, which is 0.49, and on the top the probability that it was a freshman girl, 0.106. And notice here I am using the P's because we are talking about probabilities, not raw values. The probability that it's a girl, given it's a freshman, Again, the denominator is freshman. Let's just change up our colors. So the de denominator is freshman. The numerator is freshman girls. So again, it's very important that the top be people who are in both categories. That's why it's the intersection. So again, freshman girls 0 0.106 out of 0 0.230. So I did put what we had previously for each of these just so we could compare. So I usually get questions like, well, why aren't they exactly the same? And the answer to that is when I turned these into probabilities, they were not precise. They were rounded. So based on the information that I have, these are correct because I used the values given to me. It's more correct the other way because it's using the actual numbers, but in real life, most of the time we're not given raw data. Quite often we're just given uh, the relative data, so percentages. Now we're going to do a practice question where we have to use this formula. We're not able to make a table because we don't have a table. Uh, we could make a VIN, but honestly, a VIN wouldn't help us to solve this anyway. And the reason it won't is because we're finding a conditional probability. So this question tells us 33% of students at Bellevue University are in relationships, 25% are in sports, and 11% are in both. So find the probability that a student athlete you see is in a relationship. So I need to determine, am I finding the probability that it's an athlete given relationship or am I finding the probability that it's relationship given athlete? So let's look a little bit closer at this question. It says find the probability that a student athlete you see that means that's given. It is given that this person is a student athlete. I'm finding the probability that they're in a relationship. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm finding the probability of relationship given, and I'll just put S uh, A for student athlete, which means on the top, my denominator, or sorry, my numerator, is the probability that it is someone who is in a relationship and a student athlete, both of those. The denominator is the probability of the given condition, which is student athlete. So here the relationship and student athlete says 11% are both a student athlete and in a relationship. My denominator, people who are athletes, are 25 percent. So these are the two values I care about and when I divide I get 0.44. So that tells me 
there is a 44% probability that a student athlete is in a relationship. Now let's take a look at this 33 that we completely ignored throughout the question. The 33 says 33% of students are in relationships. So there is a 33% probability that a BU student is in a relationship. So can I make any assumptions about this? Well, we're going to talk about that in a little more detail later, but based on this, we can see that student athletes are in relationships at a higher, you know, probability basically than people who are not athletes. One last practice for you to try on your own and be careful on this one. Uh, I did take this one right from your MyStatLab homework. Uh, so take a moment, press pause, try the questions, then press play to see how you did. So the first question says, what is the probability a subject has both conditions? Well, hopefully we all know that we don't want high blood pressure and we don't want high cholesterol. So a subject who has both conditions would be someone who had high blood pressure and high cholesterol, which means I would take this group right here. 0.11, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Next, what is the probability a subject has high blood pressure? So I want just high blood pressure and anyone who has high blood pressure is anyone in this column, which means I have to do some addition, which is 0.11 plus 0.16, which gives me 0.27. Next, the probability that a subject has high cholesterol given he or she has high blood pressure. So we're given the high blood pressure, which means when I'm finding my probability um, of high cholesterol given high BP, then my numerator will be people who have high both, which we already figured out in step A, which was 0.11. My denominator will be only people with high blood pressure, which I just figured out in part B, which is 0.27. And so again, I have to divide on these. And if you're doing this on an assessment, you would make sure you use the fraction button in the equation editor. And I get 0.4074. And then on my last one, it says the probability that a subject has high blood pressure given high cholesterol. So this is similar to the last one, except we are assuming the high cholesterol. So it's high BP given high cholesterol. Remember the numerator is going to be exactly the same because it's going to be people who are high in both categories. But my denominator is a number I haven't figured out yet, which is high cholesterol, which means I have to take 0.11 plus 0.21. So all of the people who have high cholesterol. And that gives me 0.11 over 0.32, which is 0.3438.